All right, we're now going to cover an overview of the autonomic nervous system. So the first thing we'll describe some of the functions of the autonomic nervous system. Focus on the abdominal pelvic region. Second, outline the two neuron pattern for the autonomic nervous system. And describe how the embryological development of the ANS helps to explain pre- and post-ganglionic locations and pathways. ANS stands for autonomic nervous system, but it sounds like anus, so I'm sorry if it sounds that way. Autonomic nervous system, there's three parts, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric, and my focus in this lecture is going to be on sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is the fight or flight. You fight a bear, you run from the bear, same thing. Your heart rate goes up, respiratory rate goes up, blood pressure goes up, pupils dilate, start sweating, and so forth, and your digestion goes down. The parasympathetic is the antagonist. It's the rest and digest. So this is the digestion of food, salivary glands, peristalsis, motility in the gut, um, and also some uh, uh, reproductive functions. So the sympathetics, it's going to focus on innervating muscle that you don't have control over, smooth muscle. And it's primarily going to be located in the smooth muscle of blood vessels like arteries. Parasympathetic is focused on smooth muscle as well, except it's the smooth muscle of the GI tract as well as the glands associated with that. Um, so if we look at the autonomic nervous system regulates cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glandular tissue. When we look at the cardiac muscle, there's a histogram of it. Both sympathetic and parasympathetic are going to innervate that. Sympathetic increases heart rate and cardiac output. Parasympathetic does the converse. Then there's smooth muscle that's shown in this, um, in this picture. And the smooth muscle is going to be um, innervated of an artery by sympathetics. But the smooth muscle of the gut tube and salivary glands is innervated by our parasympathetic nervous system. So let's talk about this two neuron pathway pattern in the ANS. <laughs> All right, the two neuron pathway has the following. There's a central nervous system origin, some innervation or synapse in an aut peripheral autonomic ganglion, and then you hit a target organ. So that number one represents the cell body of a preganglionic sympathetic neuron. And then it sends its axon to synapse in a peripheral ganglion, and there's where the second neuron is, and there's the cell body, and then that axon goes out to a target organ. So we call this the preganglionic neuron because it's before that peripheral autonomic ganglion. We call this the postganglionic neuron because it's after that autonomic ganglion. And there we have, in one picture, that pattern. So this two-neuron pathway is consistent with both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Sympathetics. So what are some specifics now? Well, the sympathetics, the CNS origin, is always between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. And this all deals with, because it's innervating primarily artery, smooth muscle of arteries, the yolk sac and the development of these original arteries is right along that front of the T1 to L2 region of the spinal cord. So that's where all sympathetics originate. Then that second uh, group of the, the cell bodies of the second neuron will either be in the sympathetic chain or the preaortic ganglia. Now, our parasympathetics, their CNS origin is always the brain stem, midbrain pons medulla, or the sacral spinal cord, S2, 3, and 4. And this is kind of funky because it's the parasympathetics are primarily responsible for innervating smooth muscle of the gut tube, which because of the way that gut tube folds and the way it goes to the cranial and caudal and then it zips down to the middle, it kind of comes from the top and the bottom. Now, the vagus nerve is the primary brainstem origin of parasympathetics, and that's going to be from the medulla. And then the sacral spinal cord, S234, will do the hind gut in the pelvic region. Then all of the peripheral autonomic ganglia, those where the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons arise, they're in the intramural ganglia. Intramural means within the organ. Intramural basketball, you're playing on teams inside your university. Intramural ganglia, it's ganglia within the organ itself. So let's talk about how the autonomic development all right, let's discuss how the autonomic nervous system develops in an embryo and how that can help us understand these two neuron pathways. So there's a cross-section through developing the embryo. And there's the neural tube in blue, and there's a somite from that periaxial mesoderm, and there's the gut tube. Oh, it's cute. All right, so now let's take the superior view, and we're going to go shing and look at it this way. So there's the uh, dorsal aspect and the ventral aspect and the left and the right surface of this developing embryo in cross-section. So there's our neural tube, becomes the CNS. There's the neural crust cells we'll talk about. There's our somites. And there's the notochord. And so that's interesting, that notochord, because uh, we'll talk about, yeah. So the notochord, it becomes 
in an adult, the only thing it becomes is the nucleus pulposus. Now, that's significant because the nucleus pulposus surrounded by the annulus fibrosus are the intervertebral discs. Remember that because that's going to be an important landmark for this development. And then just for orientation, there's our dorsal aorta and the inferior vena cava. And there's our gut tube, but surrounded by visceral peritoneum. There's the double membrane mesentery. There's our parietal peritoneum. And then there's that peritoneal cavity. All right. So in yellow, there's our neural crest cells. And they're neural crest cells, so there's a bunch of them. So I'm going to put blue dots to represent these neural crest cells. And these neural crest cells then become all the peripheral nerve ganglia. So neural crest cells are like graduating medical students. Here we have the University of Utah on the top right. And so, and there's four students. Well, when these students graduate, some of them are going to go and stay right here at the University of Utah and become internal medicine residents. Well, some of them are going to then migrate and go out to NYU and go into general surgery. And some of them are going to migrate out to UCLA and be going to family medicine. Some are going to migrate out to ASU and go to dermatology. Well, Neural crest cells are like graduating medical students, where some of these neural crest cells stay right there where they're located and they become dorsal root ganglia. Some of these graduating neural crest cells migrate out to the paravertebral region and become sympathetic chain ganglia. Some of them migrate out in front of the aorta and become preaortic ganglia. And some of them migrate out right into the wall of these organs um, and become intraneural ganglia. And so let's take these neural crest cells and show this migration. Well, some of them are going to migrate and just only migrate like a wee bit, like one, one room to the next, and then become these dorsal root ganglia where they take all sensory information from this associated um, um, dermatomes and all the visceral sensory neurons and send them into the neural tube. And so here we have a cross-section of the spinal cord, and in green shows a dorsal root ganglion. And then there's that cell body in the middle of the pseudounipolar neuron. And those cells are those neural crest cells. They become the dorsal root ganglia cells. Now, some of these graduating neural crest cells are going to migrate in front of the notochord. So here they are migrating in front of the notochord. And if they're in front of the notochord and just to the side, remember that that notochord becomes the intervertebral disc and it's part of that vertebral column. So we call those the paravertebral ganglia or our sympathetic chain. Here we have a picture from the front and there's one sympathetic ganglion and another and another and all the way down in front of the vertebral column or to the side, pardon me, to the side of the vertebral column. So that's what we call paravertebral ganglia or the sympathetic chain. Some of these neural crest cells are going to migrate in front of that aorta. And so as they migrate in front of the aorta, we now call those the preaortic ganglia, appropriately, or prevertebral because they're in front of as opposed to the side of those vertebrae. And so those preaortic ganglia are like the ciliac ganglion and superior mesenteric ganglion, the irritical uh, renal ganglion, and the inferior mesenteric ganglion or inferior hypogastric ganglia, all in front of that aorta, preaortic ganglia. So both paravertebral and preaortic ganglia only deal with sympathetics. Now, our last neural crest cell migration deal with parasympathetics, and these ones are going to migrate into the viscera themselves. So those blue arrows show, and they go, pew, shing, and they're now in the wall of the organ itself, intramural ganglia. An example of that is here's this cross-section through part of the small intestine. That is what you knew in histology as Arabox plexus. That's an intramural ganglia. So in review, here we have... Um, the central nervous system. And this is where all autonomics originate. So the preganglionic neurons originate in the neural tube. It's the lateral horn gray matter or a, sim a homologous structure in the brainstem. So here we have the brainstem and S234 are for parasympathetic origin. That's where they all arise. And then sympathetics are between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. So now, what about the second order neuron? Well, the preaortic ganglia is where the postganglionic sympathetic neurons arise. And then the intramural ganglia is where the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons arise, both of which derive from our neural crest cells.